Hey everybody, it's Malik, and we're back here to do a, a short little video on uh, something that a lot of my students are having some issues on. So I thought I'd write a, make a quick little PowerPoint on it, um, to help you understand it a little bit better. When we're dealing with password entropy, we, we talk about this right much in uh, advanced security and what password entropy is. And if you look it up on Google or whatever, you're going to get a ton of different answers. The main reason is that entropy is used in more than just, of course, passwords. It's really a mathematical thing. But for this case, we're talking about password entropy. So everybody has probably seen this. This when this comic came out and Dropbox did a pretty funny thing on it too but just real quickly they're looking at this this first password the TR0UB4DOR and 3 and they're taking a look at the entropy on it which is nothing more than the, deg the degree of randomness now there is a formula to figure out the entropy so in this case they're using uppercase, lowercase, numbers, and special symbols. It's it's what two, four, six, eight, ten. It's eleven characters long. By running it through the uh, the formula, I'm going to show you in a minute. They come up with. Uh, this password has 28 bits of entropy, 28 bits of, of randomness inside of it. Now, they ran a formula that said, well, if this thing is brute force attacked or dictionary attacked at a thousand guesses a second, it would take about three days to break. So, it's fairly easy. Three days is... I mean, it's still a rather long time, but it's it's still easy to break. But it's hard for the user to remember because you're dealing with uppercase, lowercase, special symbols, and numbers. Well, they said, well, what if we drop that? And what if we pick four random common words? Now this is where everybody loses this part because it doesn't have it in the comic these four random common words are actually inside of a group of 2048 words and it randomly picks four words and those four words are put together well overall the length of that pass phrase in this case, they're, they're using all lowercase, but the length of that pass phrase comes to be 44 bits of entropy, which turns it from three days to guess to 550 years to guess. And it's easier to remember. Now, I didn't go as far as trying to prove this thing wrong. I'm not trying to do that. Uh, I... I believe using just lowercase, I, I would have to check that to see if it does pull 44 bits. It, it's about 11 bits per word, so that does sound about right. But they, they do have something at the bottom that I do agree with. Through 20 years of effort, we su we've successfully trained everyone to use passwords that are hard for humans to remember, but easy for computers to guess. Okay, so let's take a look at the formula and, and stuff like that. We're going to take a look at the equations. This is how they figure out the total bits of entropy in a password. It is the length of the password, be it 8 characters, 9 characters, 10 characters, 11 characters, multiplied by the logarithmic 2 <clears throat> times the number of possible symbols that you have to use. And when I mean the, the number of, of, of possible symbols, I'll get into that in just a second. You'll see the breakdown. Now, there is some variations here. It does depend on how the word was generated, whether it was done by a human or whether it was done by a computer. But we're going to use the same one. Humans tend to not do very random anything. Um, there's some interconnection between the words we pick and the things we pick. Now, for instance, 
I just just very quickly, uh, you know, some of the more advanced brute force attack attack programs, if it hits the letter H, the first thing it's going to try next is the letter E, because E commonly follows H. So it's going to have some algorithms inside of the brute force attack that's going to help it guess things. So it tries to guess the pattern that a typical human would normally do. Computers can be made not to do that. Very difficult for a human to do it. But we're going to use this for all of them for, for an even playing field. Okay, let's take a look at the character sets real quick. When I talked about the character sets and the formula, if we're just dealing with digits, let's say your pin, we're just dealing with, you know, one through nine. So uh, that really, well, really is would be zero through nine. I'm sorry, so I should put zero through nine. That would overall be ten characters. Now we do have all our lowercase letters, which are 26. We have all of our uppercase letters, which are 26. And then we have 32 special characters: the parentheses, the ampersand, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Add all those together, we have a total of 94 possible characters if we have to use one from every set. So let's take a look at how that plays into entropy using the formula. Now again to make this easy we're going to say every single password is the same length. Well if we're just using digits let's stick all this together. And do 8 times logarithmic 2 times 10 we're going to come up with 26.57 bits of entropy. Uh, that's roughly uh, 100 million passwords that we can get out of 0 through 9 at 8 digits long. Okay. Well, let's just say, okay, we're just going to do lowercase. Well, it's the same formula, but of course we changed the 10 to a 26. That's going to bump us up to 37.6 bits of entropy which is about 2.8 billion passwords because we have more letters to choose from. Deal with upper and lower case. Now we have 52 characters we can choose from at any character spot. That's going to give us 45.6 bits of entropy, which is 53.5 trillion passwords. if we deal with every single character. That's 94. It's 52.4 bits of entropy, which are six quadrillion passwords. So I'm sure you can see a pattern here. The more characters you choose from, the higher the level of entropy and the higher the number of possible passwords. But they're also difficult to remember when you start dealing with all characters. And also there's another big thing to remember here that they don't point out. Entropy only works against brute force attacks and dictionary attacks. If I am trying to break your password with a rainbow table attack, I don't care if you use digits, just lowercase, uppercase and lowercase, or all characters, I will break them all at the same time because a rainbow table basically creates a table out of the length of the password. I am going to have every possible combination of every eight character password that can possibly be made. Now it will take me a very long time to build that rainbow table, but I will have six quadrillion passwords in that rainbow table. I can break any password. That's where length comes in more handy, where we start making passwords longer than people make their rainbow tables. So it's that standard formula there. It's the length of the password, and then log 2 of the number of characters that can possibly be used. Okay? So this is what they're starting to talk about. What if we start using passphrases? Now, I just wrote this one in here. I just made this one up. Into the city of grief. All I have is uppercase and lowercase. It's 18 characters long. It is a breeze to remember. That's 102 bits of entropy. 
and it's also 18 characters long. Now, if I wanted to fancy it up some, I could change n2, the number 2, still uppercase, lowercase, and then change the i to an exclamation mark. Well, now, even though I only use one character of each, or actually I use two numbers and then only one special symbol, I still have to add the whole set in there. So it's 18 characters long, but I'm using up to 94 characters. I'm at 117 almost 118 bits of entropy. The higher the entropy, the stronger the password. The harder it is to break. Especially with brute force and dictionary attacks. Now, the longer the password, the harder it is for rainbow tables to break. Because most rainbow tables are only between 8 and 12 characters now. So if you have a 14 character password, it's going to, they're not going to be able to break it with their standard rainbow tables. They're going to have to create bigger ones. And it, it can take a while to create a rainbow table. Okay. Now, just one more thing for you to, you to think about. Okay. Again, it's not only the characters used, just as importantly, it's the length of the password and the randomness of it. Take a look at this one. Supercalifragilisticexpialidocious has no more entropy than cow when it comes to doing dictionary attacks. You wait a minute. Okay, that makes no sense. How can that extremely long word have the same amount of entropy than cow? Well, if we went it through the the uh, formula, technically it doesn't, but if you're running a dictionary attack, <clears throat> both of those words appear in the dictionary. <clears throat> when we're dealing with dictionary attacks, it, it doesn't really go by the length of the word. It goes by whether the word is in a dictionary or whether the word is not in a dictionary. Cow is in the dictionary. If somebody runs a dictionary attack against you and you have the word cow as your password, it will break it. Supercalifragilisticexpialidocious is in the dictionary. It doesn't care how long it is, it will still find it. And it, it figures out about a thousand guesses a second, so while it may take you know, another second to get to the S's after the C's, it's still going to break it within a second or two. So do not ever, ever, ever use words that appear in the dictionary. You can do <clears throat> Again, what, what they did earlier, by taking a word in the dictionary and adding other words in the dictionary, and in their case they did four, that does not make it a dictionary word. So the horse correct battery staple. So you can do that. That will work. I mean, into the city of grief, every one of those words are in the dictionary. Together, though, that's not a dictionary word. So it won't be broken with a dictionary attack. It has to take a rainbow table or a brute force. And if I'm dealing with 102 bits of entropy or 170 bits of entropy, they're going to stop it before they break it. They'll never get into it. So start dealing with passwords that are easy for you to remember, but longer. And then slap in a symbol or two that you can remember. We need to start making our passwords much more powerful than what they are now and stop using the the default substitutions I mean I did it here uh, for I I did the exclamation mark for E I did the three for you know for A you do the four for A you do the at they're standard substitutions now they, they can be found out pretty quickly uh, we need to kind of you know change it up a little bit but that's what entropy is it's it's that one formula and it's the degree of randomness of the password that makes it difficult for it to be brute forced or dictionary attacked it has nothing to do with rainbow tables or cracking hashes it only has to do with that so hope that clears up some confusion because most people get confused because they, they think of the rainbow tables it has nothing to do with it
So that's a little bit on entropy. Um, I'll do some other ones a little later on where I'll actually uh, make a whole bunch of different passwords and I'll bring them into like Kane and Abel uh, and we'll test one at a time and we'll take a look at the, the, the benchmark to see how long it's going to take to break it. And so I'll, I'll let you see what the entropy level is before we try to break it and then Kane will come back and tell us how long it's going to take um, to break it. So we'll be able to compare the, the numbers with a program that's actually trying to bust into it. All right, but until then, uh, if you enjoyed the videos, give it a, a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel. Uh, let me know if there's anything you want to see. I'll be glad to help. Until then, this is Malik, and I'm out.